Welcome to episode 38 of Breaking Hearts. Kama kawaida it's your boy Hafare, aka Mr. Metronome, aka Rodney Malik Casino, aka your girlfriend's boyfriend. Na leo kuna mtu amekasirika about that nickname sawa. As in Missy Missy Wanya amekasirika kwa huu. Ako ako na madem zao. Carefully wondering when I'll pop up to ruin the relationships. It's something I'm good at. Oh my god. <laughs> and once again really glad. Uh-huh. I'm happy to be back yo. It's Suki aka Suki Maraga aka Suki the JPEG aka Jessica Rabbit aka Uzumaki which is exactly how my month of July was um thank Spiral. you for yes yeah. Spiral guy <laughs> thank you for your deep concern but Nikofiti mm-hmm. I'm back I'm healthy <sighs> sikupata um, insurance as a kahusha it <sighs> we get by una check by the it bothers me we listen was... to our favorite rappers we say that they have sick beats we get sick we come back what maybe, maybe you are sick still maybe love the bad when you go into because normally you would never have said that wow i'll wow. blame the meds i will blame the fucking meds but i go to the therapy back, have i you go to therapy i go to therapy maybe go to scream in the wild like an animal so <laughs> Na piganga there's a reason kuna leo na tax ronga hii anymore. You go for your walks for your mental health. For mental health na ingia police friend na scream. Alafu piga tu nduru. Kwa kama msio anduzi. Piga nduru tu na wendele na maisha yako. Anyway, anyway, new set who this? Mhm. New Isn't set who this? It's gorgeous. There's a plant behind us. We, we support the environment. The good company has been good to us. Exactly. Greta Thunberg, we stand. <laughs> So, no trees were harmed in the making of this set. So we, we might be hot but uh, we don't support global warming. <laughs> so uh, yeah, all the corny dad jokes. I miss you. Your mana, I'm your girlfriend's boyfriend. Like mm-hmm. you, you don't make her laugh like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, anyway. Nimekuwa nikikusikiza. Uh-huh. It's been a lovely two weeks. You've had such insightful guests. Yes, shout out to Eric, shout out to Charisma. Sh- shout out to Eric and Charisma for real for holding down the seat. Mm-hmm. It was amazing I feel, i feel like i learned a lot pia that i'd want to tap in um tap there's in a lot today. there's a lot we wanted to talk about that we haven't but nisa there's time there's time and 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 if you're watching this if you're watching this mjue kwanza audio metoka let's just hey, say that we are Spotify. now on all your favorite audio podcast pl- 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 platforms come out to angalia you know i know a lot of you especially the men they look at me and they feel inferior so take you just have to listen to me now you don't have to look at me so uh, he wants to be the voice inside your head exactly i want secure homes <laughs> i want secure homes marriages that last okay si makosa yangu mimi ni mrembo please anyway, for the love of god tell me what music you were listening to last let's week let's start with a hood classic yeah. i had to revisit a hood 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 classic mm-hmm. flocka valley mm-hmm. by waka flocka fling mm-hmm. first of all i'll say this no hands is the ultimate strip club anthem mm-hmm. i was in the strip club not last week i think the week <laughs> before yeah you need to go to the Did strip they play club no hands yeah I, i i took some babes to the strip club because mm-hmm. they, they hadn't been there before mm-hmm. they don't play no hands but you have to appreciate how much core strength strippers have No for real. Yeah, you have for to. real. Cuz hey, nakwambia that babe was going up that pool like an Olympic swimmer. And I think I just wanna hang from the If it was me I'd be dead. Ni wewe nimevunjika mgongo kita anajisikilia. Hiyo kitu ni exercise. Any anyone like pole dancing is actually a sport. Okay, yeah. not a sport. Like it's something you can do for your fitness. Yeah. Ujibambe. By the way, and this is something I I, I realize in the middle of that. I I realize something in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. Like people say they wanna fuck strippers. No you don't. Ah watu wako na stamina. No. Kama una survive on a steady diet of gilbis and chicken in. Kama una survive on a steady diet of gilbis and chicken in. Ai. Mtu anapanda pole bare handed hivyo with baby oil on them. Hakuna kitu tunamwambia. Hakuna kitu tunamwambia. Baby oil on the on the fucking pole, pole itself. Na ana grip kaka uru hana yama hivi. Sawa. So, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> so anyway. Mm-hmm. Flockavelli strip club anthems. No hands strip club anthem. It's basically a mix of strip club anthems and beat niggas up anthems. Mhm. Like oh let's do it. That's like that's fight music. Mm-hmm. Tunapigana. Mm-hmm. Uh, hard in the paint. Ooh, I go hard in the motherfucking paint, nigga. Mm-hmm. What you think, nigga? Gotcha. Fight music. No hands, stripper music. Mm-hmm. Grocery street party, stripper music. Wasted. Party. F- oh no, wasted say Would you say it's Gucci. an uplifting banger for you? Of course it is. A- an uplifting set of bangers. Yes, I love I love ignorant nigga music mm-hmm. because I feel there's too much positivity in the world. <laughs> 
Sawa. Every day you go on TikTok, every day you, do, every day you go on Instagram, and mm-hmm. there's somebody telling you that you must achieve your higher self. No. <laughs> I want to achieve be my lower self. self. <laughs> I want to satisfy my base desires. Do you know what cavemen did? Damn. Cavemen ate, slept, mm-hmm. fought, and had sex. Those four things. That is music that satisfies the four primal urges. So does um, Utopia in the same vein also just apply to that? Like it's it's rage music. It's not supposed to make sense. It's just uh, supposed to make no, you feel no. your base instincts. We'll talk about Utopia. I, I really want I have, to know I have, I have a point here about that, yeah, yeah. About the rage music thing. So anyway, mm-hmm. that was that. I really, uh, Flockavelli, go listen to it if you haven't. And then there are people who, who don't know no hands. Mm-hmm. So it's like, especially Gen Z kids, so they're like, mm, they need to be introduced to a fucking hood classic. And then there was Vices, mm-hmm. Harry Fraud, and um, Currency, again, sticking with the aquatic theme. Mm-hmm. There's always like, it's always like cigarette boats, regatta, this or that. It's always aquatic. Vices, very nice production. Harry Fraud has been on a tear this year, mm-hmm. as production wise, like producer of the year so far for me, hip hop wise. He has been making some of the most insane beats you'd ever think of, and that is crazy. It's, mm-hmm. it's kind of short and it feels very, it feels like Narcos. Mm-hmm. Now, because season three, when they're in Miami, when they when they were focusing on the Cali Cartel, nice. it feels that's 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 what I felt like when I listened to it. It was like mm-hmm. whoosh, just like cigarette boats just skimming over the water, transferring yeah. cocaine from like whatever Cuba mm-hmm. to fucking Miami, and uh, it has those vibes. And even the skits, even the intros are just very mafia centric. Mm-hmm. Very nice record, very short, like around twenty minutes, but very nice, very very good, easy listening to. Mm-hmm. And finally, 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 my favorite girl. Mm-hmm. I, Pop Princess, and I said this before, I am proven right once again. <laughs> I am proven right. I am not wrong. I am just ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. I am always ahead of the curve. You see potential uh, when you know. I know. It, you, know when, you know it when you hear it. Uh, around this time last year, uh, mm-hmm. so, uh, roughly, I told you about The Loneliest Time by mm-hmm. Carly Rae Jepsen, and I told you how much of a good album it was. Mm-hmm. And the best part would be there would be a side B. The side B came out, baby, The mm-hmm. Loveliest Time. Carly mm-hmm. Rae Jepsen. Pop princess giving us what I would call a sampler menu of what good pop is like. Mm-hmm. Like, ay, kuna mango mazingi na let me even tell you. Uh, what was I looking for? I like psychedelic suite. Yeah, psychedelic suite you. is so it's very um, French housey. Mm-hmm. It is very very French housey kabisa, and it, I loved it. It felt like um, 1996 Daft Punk, 98 Daft Punk mm-hmm. when they were making one more time. Damn, mm-hmm. damn. And you notice this when we listen to it with yeah. you. Yeah. And then there's like collage. Collage yeah. is very. Like Kaliuchis. Kaliuchis, Free Nationals. It feels like a song Tame Impala would make somehow. Mm-hmm. Kamikaze, Kamikaze is pure, like, hyper-pop. It mm-hmm. feels Charlie XCX-like. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's, uh, somewhere Karibu na nani. See, Kim like Petras. I love heart bus. Check it, relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cindy, you know what? And the thing is, there's also, like, Stadium Love and Weekend Love. Uh-huh. And all these are, like, anxious attachment bops. Mm-hmm. Like, Kali Ray Jepsen makes music for people who have anxious and attachment yeah. issues. <laughs> That's why I think I relate to it, so. Yeah. But also all the great romantics have been anxiously attached. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, really good album. Really, really, really good album. Like, mm-hmm. how is she two for two when it comes to, like, back to back years, the best pop album I've listened to. This is better than fucking That Feels Good by Jesse Ware. And you know how much I love that album, mm-hmm. which is fucking insane. Because eh, it's been a good year for pop, by the way. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. There have been some bangers, and Taylor Swift has really released some stuff, but it's been a good pop year for pop. And please... The mm-hmm. loveliest time. It's in the fucking name. The loveliest time, Sawa. Just go listen to it. You will have a lovely fucking time. That's fact. You? I I, I feel like I want to latch onto that Kali Ray Jepsen thing just because I was like not on the train until very recently. I, I love how so many people are not on the train and then they're all like... Hello, girl, your influence. And your then influence. last week I was getting messages. <laughs> You are right, by the way. You are right about this. <laughs> yeah, you are right. Yeah. I, I told you, niggas. I told you, niggas. It feels so good to be vindicated. <laughs> she, she was the call me maybe girl for a really long time, though. Like, I feel like when that sets the pace for the way people perceive you, I just, yeah, okay, it I is get what it. it is. But like when you grow into your sound and like you start exploring different topics, I feel like that's why I like psychedelic switch so much also. She's, she's talking about stuff that I've been thinking about, like existentialism. Yeah, really. And it's pop. And it's pop. You can't hate. You can't hate. You can't hit. It's really good. And it's, it's like French house and you're like, you're vibing. It's like a psychedelic, psychedelic switch. <laughs> like, she's just na, like, na, literally, na, na, na. if you're anxiously attached, this album is for you. 
you can sing it in the shower she's yes. so like <laughs> she, she has she, she does something she does she, something she, she, she really think, she gets into like your hippocampus and she uh, sits there and big she's words. like mimi nakuimbia big words ni 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 but yeah she i think she's perfected the pop formula she understands mm. what it is to make a good pop song that isn't pandering mhm like that isn't just formulaic like it's good but you can understand like if somebody else was told to make this song they wouldn't do it they yeah. wouldn't be able to make psychedelic switch or kamikaze or anything else in this album so yeah love mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. nice okay um mine was a mix of two different things i think um especially getting into utopia my my whole thing i told you that i hadn't listened to it um as late as friday mm-hmm. so i've been kind of soaking myself in the zeit guest around it just cuz I I feel like that's a thing about the internet that you don't appreciate um how the how the internet can affect your perception of like a particular piece of music you'll see so many articles about it before you've even gotten to listen to it it's been released like right now but like all these other guys have been listening to it for ages they're ready with their reviews they've pushed them out they're already telling you there's nothing to listen to there so like for a while I was like hmm Maybe maybe there's something here. Yeah. I read like three articles on the day that it was released and I'm like a Travis fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I've listened to Travis like over the years. The things about him that I enjoy, the things about him I don't enjoy, but like the news the new circle around him just became like a bit more salacious or like even more interesting than the music itself. And then I got to the music today and I was like, this is really nice. This is it sounds good. Like sonically I I have no notes apart from the fact that like you, we we talked about the fact that it's kind of picked up on users as energy yeah very much so and um i found i found an article on um, a blog called nobels that basically um outlined how the music was actually drawn from a lot of the donda 2 sessions um around 2020 like some of those like the song with beyonce del resto um and then casey a uh, Kenyan who has won a Grammy I I I can't like refute the fact that like Travis did him dirty Travis did him dirty What happened? Ndaka ndaka niambie. Apparently um he, he was listed as like a songwriter but like he's not just a songwriter he's also a performer and mm-hmm. he was on the song but he wasn't credited. So he he went uh, on Twitter said fuck Trav and I mean I was like why didn't he like give the proper credit but we'll never know. Mm-hmm. And then beyond that I think I when we were talking about it on Friday you brought up the fact that I, I brought up the fact that like I also found something about him being an industry plant and you had very interesting insights about that aren't you too yeah okay so yeah. first things first i i have said this on twitter many times and mm-hmm. I, we had this discussion i had this discussion on ntangwaje uh, cuz this was what i was looking for actually yeah to break to get into this so um mm-hmm. i've had a discussion on another podcast kitambo but and this is not attacking the man for his artistry mm-hmm. but regardless of how you look at it and if you just think about it critically Travis Scott is probably the most successful cover and covert industry plant we've ever seen in hip hop yeah because first of all let's just look at let's break down what we know the facts this man got on double xl mm-hmm. freshman cover freshman cover which in 2013 was one of the most prestigious things you could have as a hip hop artist because it meant now like you've been noticed like the the effort you've been putting in and the time you've been putting in and building a catalog of fan base you may notice you are now mm-hmm. now the general public is now ready for you that's the step up let me tell you who he was on the cover with that mm-hmm. year schoolboy q trinidad james joy badas mm-hmm. absol logic action bronson kako bangs dizzy right and angel hayes what happened to kako bangs kako bangs okay out of this list i can say yeah. that two people who are there mm-hmm. off the strength of one single mm mm-hmm. That is Trinidad James and Kako Banks because that is the year old gold everything came out and mm-hmm. the year Nini came out which were monster hits um yeah. Drunk in My Cup which yeah. I still believe is one of the best like top 5 hip hop songs all time mm-hmm. Schoolboy Q Joy Badass Absol Logic Action Bronson um Dizzy Wright and Angel Hayes all had spent a very very long time building up um a fan base uh, a catalog and actually doing the groundwork to build like sour we were building a foundation because this is after schoolboy q had put out habits and contradictions which mm-hmm. was really well received mm-hmm. joy badass had put out um 1999 if i'm not mistaken um yeah and then like he had um this song with uh, i think they're just blanking but you know what i mean the, the the song that yeah absol had put out control system which i still believe is the best td record mm-hmm. logic had a few tapes out action bronson had like four because there was well done there was rare chandeliers there was blue chips one There's, there was a lot of buzz around him dizzy right also was doing his thing in vegas 
making very thoughtful like Kendrick Lamar type music and Angel Hayes was redefining what it meant to be a female rapper mm-hmm. especially in, in that era where everybody wanted to be a Nicki Minaj clone mm-hmm. Travis Scott only had one song mm-hmm. one song out when he made that that list one the singular one and mm-hmm. you can tell me oh the stuff he did to you before with his homies that nobody's listened to that shit the go check his, we can even look up his discography right now okay and i will tell you mm-hmm. why i say like the facts point in the same direction so beyond the discography when you when you consider that your first song when your first project is being produced by mike dean yeah that's mike dean works with kanye like this isn't some like your homie who learned how to put no this is mike dean mm. this is hey yeah so like Travis Scott discography so let me look in May 2013 Scott re- released his debut mixtape Owl Farro mm-hmm. that's 2013 and that's the same year mm-hmm. he got in on the whatever um Mono me catch up some days before radio no pana no like mm-hmm. so, days before radio came after Owl yeah. Farro so like these are albums collaborative albums um mixtapes you see mm-hmm. for mixtapes you can go it's Owl Farro and days before radio So that, that's my, like Travis Scott had no reason to be on that list. This is so good though. <laughs> But this came out 2014. Oh yeah, after. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, this that's is 2013. Mm-hmm. Not attacking the artist. The artist is really good. Yeah. So, and then there's the fact that Travis Scott's dad is actually the person who who taught DJ Premier yeah how to use a drum machine. DJ Premier, DJ Premier was gangster. So there's like an OG Nepo baby. Yes, there's very heavy. It. And it, it, there's nothing wrong. with being an industry plant if you're good and yeah, he is good he is good okay like i guess the past couple of years he's kind of gotten in his head about everything which i think is the point where i say that i'm kind of disappointed but like sonically bad work yeah i guess and there's something you said about rage music that i i want to talk about because you feel like um like with flocka valley flocka valley is rage music mm. but there's a there's a there's a reasoning behind the rage yeah that is, that is pretty obvious like you grew up in the hood you say Like you've seen your homies die every day. So if you listen like if you listen to a King Von record mm-hmm. or Lil Dark or those guys mm-hmm. and then these niggas have PTSD. Nani, what's his name? Um Fredo Santana before he yeah. passed, uh, may his soul rest in peace. Mm-hmm. He did an interview where he after like he went for therapy and he was told he had PTSD mm-hmm. growing up in Chicago. So there's a, there's a, there's a there's a reasoning behind the rage. I don't get the reasoning behind Travis Scott's rage. rage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe, maybe there's some internal issues that he's dealing with. Maybe he's depressed, who knows? And it's okay. See it I mean it, it it just sounds like it but like even the way that he addresses it in his music isn't like as direct. Like it's a lot more he, like he was blase about Astro World mm-hmm. in the same project but like at the same time he's just exploring like some of the darker feelings I guess which brings me to my next point. The fact that um Utopia came out people likened it to Jesus said that the sound was kind of like parallel in a way It came out that some of the pr- some of the songs were part of Donda 2. They scrapped a couple of people. Shaq West was scrapped off at some mm-hmm. point. Um a lot of Kanye verses also removed. This is like I, I don't think it's like well cross-checked because like I, I saw some people disputing some of the things that were said by Nobels. Mm-hmm. But um it introduces me to like this artist called Blackie who apparently inspired both Jesus and now by default um Utopia and mm-hmm. the, some of the themes that I explored there. the sound on um black skin head specifically pulls a lot from the way that blacky's music yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. and blacky is um b akona hyphen mingi between the blacky <laughs> it's b l a c k i e but like he recently released like his entire discography so you can also just check that out to see you know, really what you artist, think about that uh-huh. an artist become too artisty sometimes <laughs> I really hate like so Why, you, don't, you don't want them to credit No like, pana no pana I uh-huh. get it I get like yeah you you're leaning into the artistry a bit too much maze you're not mm-hmm. scaring the hose <laughs> Th- That's what I'm trying to say Uh like when you're wearing a hat that big that's bigger than your whole body mm-hmm. checky I I fuck with the artistry I understand it but at some <laughs> point maze utafika mahali uambiwe ah kunaendaje Maze oh, oh Byron thank coming you, into Byron. short oh my god You know how many people I've always people always wonder who is Byron? Byron ni nani? Byron. Stay anonymous. Byron our wonderful you. producer. Mentor Leta Maji. This her journey. I'm at Leta Maji, lovely lovely. Na siku moja mama mtamuona tu kwa camera. Follow him on Insta, on TikTok at man's like Byron on Twitter kila mahali. Little middle of the episode plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate when artists become artists too 
you you you're too artisty. I mean, like you're leaning into the craft to the point where you're starting I'm like this is getting a bit weird. Can you kwandika can you kwandika so many hyphens? I get it. No, like don't. you have to you have to distinguish yourself because like how many blackies are there in the world? That's a thing. So like what's your what's your distinct identity? What differentiates you no. from all the you know other what? blackies? He should be the winning blackie, not the only, not how many blackies, he should be the blackie that won. But sasa kama be blackie like everyone else but be the one that won. Sound yake sasa imeappropriate now. Wase kama Kanye, wase kama Travis. Blackie star yindo anatokea na na nini na discography yake to show people that like yes, you know like I understand that people are saying that like this has been likened to this and this and this but like this is my music. You get to decide what, what you would okay. have listened to. So, okay. It just makes it interesting. Valid, valid point. <laughs> so yeah, like I, I wouldn't say Utopia is also scaring the hoods. I like I, I feel like it's so in Lostless Kwanza I listened to it on Apple Music. <sighs> I didn't I didn't go on Spotify this yes. time. Yes. Just I, I needed to do and I liked it. Yeah, but the thing with I feel like Utopia, one of mm-hmm. the things with Utopia, it doesn't have that you know that one Yeah. It doesn't have a ingo my tango aje. Ingo my Travis and Drake. Sikomo, it doesn't have a Sikomo, it doesn't have a monster hit, but it doesn't need it. Fin. You don't like Fin? It it it, it Okay, not, Fin Fin is not it's like Sikomo, it's not um there's there's a song I really liked on Astro World. Astro World had some really nice songs mm. though. Coffee Bean was nice. Um I remember uh the, the one with Nani, Yosemite. Yosemite Gana and Nam. Yosemite was ah. so good. There's like, there's always a song I, on every Travis Scott album that I really really relate to Yosemite. I told you about this. Yeah. Maria I'm drunk. Hey. Yeah. Maria I'm drunk is hey that song is like speaking to God. Young Taga Coco just hey free Jeffrey or not? <laughs> I don't really know his charges. I feel like Oh no, on represent us wa Rico. Anyway, so my point is I like Rico kunangoma kunangoma ya yeah, future na Mikmile to Rico. Mm-hmm. from his 25 Mikmil 25 album it's really good by Rosu Najua yes check it's Jamaliza kusema ngoma napenda so i liked sirens um i thought sirens i, I feel like i've listened to it like a couple of times just because it has that kind of chakacha allure mm-hmm. i don't know how to explain it there's there's a way that the drums come through Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's sampled from us. Ooh. Yeah, it, it, a Zambian artist was actually sampled. Did they tell that to you? Please tell me it's it's Zamrock. It's it's close to Zamrock, I think. <sighs> yeah. It, it was because it was a Zambian rock artist. Yes. You know, like I, I feel like everything about everything about Utopia has followed me around. Even like the the studio that they were recording in in Sweden, Leona Pichai was like, "Anya, yeah, this 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 album is not like <laughs> we can't say many things about it, yeah. but it's not not good." Like Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you done cuz we have to move on? Anyway, yeah, acha nimaliza na jua tume eat in two times sana. Um so I was uh, looking for a lot of easy listening as well. So my easy listening um breakdown is Jazz is for Ordinary People. It's an EP by a producer called Balios. If you haven't listened to Jazz in a while because I have not been recommending it, then that that is my gift to you. I really liked R&R. I find it very nice. It's clubby in a I, I don't know how to explain it. You know the way that um, a busy junction caught people. Mm-hmm. Arenar has that mm-hmm. same energy, and I found it um, through a reel. Actually, I, I think I was just trying to discover music through whatever means. Like, a reel or a TikTok. A reel on on Instagram. Like Jeez. they said that he, you know you're trying to leave the club, but your favorite song starts playing, and I was like, yeah, this is my favorite song. I don't even know the name of this song, but I like it. Balios, Arenar. It's beautiful. Okay, beautiful. nice. Um, mm-hmm. I got back into some spoken word. <laughs> so I was listening to... Should I leave the, the room? No, do not <laughs> leave the room. When the poems do what they do, uh-huh. in, the, in the same vein of jazz, um, Asia Monet, a New York-based poet, and it's just beautiful production. I, I like listening to... Um, I like listening to spoken word on Sundays. So that was definitely like a great listen. Um, Slugs of... And um, it's basically just about black power it is just the things that you would expect to find in um spoken word i don't know how to break it down as well but like when the poems do what they do if you check it out please let me know i listened to the loveliest time nisha sama um I, i revisited an oldie that i particularly enjoyed called from arts unknown by can kick um can kick was mentored by madlib Ooh. so they're from around 1993 i mean he's from Um, they, they've, they've been um, together since about 1993. This project came out in 2001. I found I found it. Um, I like I like boom bap. 
I particularly will fight for Boomba. As hip hop turns 50, I will say that like oh, the yeah, Boomba era. Oh yeah, hip hop is turning 50. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to the homies at Boomba Click. They're having a thing this Saturday, a festival yeah. at uh, the museum, National Museum of Kenya. Please make sure you pull up. Make sure you go support the culture. There'll be a lot. There'll be a lot. There'll be like a performance stage. There'll be a learning exactly. stage. There'll be your favorite artist. I might be there. So you <laughs> might be there. So and if you do see me with somebody's girlfriend, mind your business. <laughs> Anyway, yes, um, but like from Arts Unknown is like a, 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 an album that like I hold very dear. And at the same time, I found some very upsetting like reviews from 2001. People are talking shit, saying that it's boring. They don't really explore anything. Kina Planet Asia, wana bo, akuna kitu wanasema. But like looking back at it, it aged very well. So check out from Arts Unknown. It's a really good project. Mm-hmm. And Slugs of Love by Little Dragon. Ooh, I haven't, had, I haven't listened to Little Dragon. Is that new? Or is that yeah, it's new. It's okay, new. Yeah, at least I have came out to about check out. two weeks ago. So very nice, easy listening. Um, R&B. I'd put it in that category. It's beautiful. And then I got into one playlist based on the fact that like, I saw a picture of um, Timbaland, Nelly Furtado, and Justin Timberlake going back, back into... <laughs> oh, they had, they had bobs. And I know nostalgia is killing music or whatever, but like I don't know, I felt something when I saw that. I felt I felt something, so I went back to uh, to Spotify. I looked for I like listening to like the producer playlists, and Timberland has some of the best behind the boards on um, on Apple Music, but on Spotify there are a lot of people who've created their own playlists, and it was really nice to like revisit just the kind of things that make Timberland tick about a beat. I found some really good old Ludacris. I Ooh. found some good um, LL Cool J. I, I hadn't listened to him in a while. Um, yeah. Sometimes you forget these niggas are rappers or like musicians. <laughs> you see them in one thing. I, I saw a 50 Cent thing the other day mm-hmm. where like he sold out like a very, 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 very big like stadium mm-hmm. in like Europe. And then guys are like, people see 50 now as like this guy who makes TV shows. They don't realize for like seven years he was the biggest artist on earth bar none. Exactly. Like there was a point more people knew 50 Cent than knew Jesus. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> no, New Kweli. 50 is, I don't think there will ever be a rapper. Yeah. And even now with the, the, the level of accessibility we have to musicians, who will ever reach the cultural peak that 50 reached? That's true. And that's it. And But, th- that's what I liked about like um, the spread that men's health has for oh. like um, hip hop at 50. I feel like uh, the rollout has been incredible from like different publications. But the one from Men's Health focused on 50, Method Man, Ludacris Common. Huh? Um, they brought in... Was Busta Rhymes Wiz Khalifa, oh, Busta okay. Rhymes, Yuko, Pia on the cover. Did you, did you see what Busta Rhymes said? I, didn't re- I haven't read Busta Rhymes. <laughs> Busta Rhymes had, I'd, 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 I've read Method Man's for reasons. I think like, <laughs> I, I think like Busta Rhymes said something like he had like an asthma attack mm. during sex or something like that. And, And that, was, that was his big... Th- like, that was his big reveal, like, <laughs> fuck... I need to like I need to you know like start losing weight, bro. Because he looks so much slimmer now than he was before. Yeah, he looks like a hundred pounds, but it's like it's always something drastic. It's always like fuck, nenda kufa bana. That's true. Kanta doing sex, uta kwa mswa k twenty four. Anyway, uh-huh. I sent you method man story, but like the thing that I really wanted to ask, especially just because I know um, like Larry June is one of your favorite rappers. Uh-huh. And um, I guess pulling just from whatever brief that they had for the mental health issue, uh-huh. I wanted to understand just how much of an influence like the rap music that you listen to has on the way that you take care of yourself. Very. A, a mm-hmm. lot of the media we consume has a very big um, influence on how we own self-care. Yeah. Because, uh, and this is, this is a very weird thing. Um, there's this show I watch called Baki. Mm-hmm. It's very... Oh, Baki! Yes. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> It's such a uh, stupid said, show. Said, said, uh-huh. <laughs> it's it's really stupid. Yeah. Like the whole concept behind it is really stupid. It's just big meaty men slapping meat, like when a pigana true. <laughs> But and then I went on like Reddit and I figured like there was a thread of niggas who were like I started watching Baki mm-hmm. and just hit the gym because yeah. all these niggas. Yeah, the whole, the, the, a thread of like 120 twenty people like even me as in I just started mm-hmm. watching Baki and started seeing Baki do roundhouse kicks. And yeah. Hanayama looking like a king, and you <laughs> what? And then the demon back, and they're like, "Yeah, I want to look like that." Yeah. In the same way, like if if your favorite rapper is telling you that they drink lean every day, and you know mm. you start drinking lean every day, this shit fucks with you. You'll die like Pimp C. But when your favorite rapper is telling you, "Hey man, like um, let's go get a let's go get a, a, a smoothie, let's yeah. go get a, a shot of wheat grass." Exactly. So, you know, like when they're saying that, when they're saying that, we're making oatmeal cookies. Even with even with OG guys, I'm starting to see even with older guys, 
Um, Doom was also big on food. Yeah, like even with, with older guys, like in Ajayda, uh, mm-hmm. the locks, our say water, D block, they, they've moved away from like the, you know, the way they used to live when they were younger. Now yeah. they're more into organic food. I think like in a new style, Spi owns like a juice bar, mm. a couple of juice bars. Like that's now the, even when, when you look at them, they look healthier. That's true. So that's yeah, true. definitely, definitely just, if, you're, if your favorite rapper is telling you, and not in a hotel, mm. eh, sour, mm. <laughs> <laughs> not in a you fucking... You don't want to do a lot ups. Check it. <laughs> Marshall ups. <laughs> Marshall ups. <laughs> yeah, in, not in a hotel, eh, but if your favorite rapper, <laughs> even with Wiz Khalifa, he's like, yeah, I smoke, but I'm in the gym. Yeah. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If your favorite rapper is doing those things, and everybody wants to be like their favorite rapper. So they're going to start doing yeah. that too. So yeah, I feel when like... Cross had the whole pair. Yes. <laughs> If Rick Ross could lose all that weight, you could too. That's true. Mm. Yeah, so listen to Larry June, drink a juice, go for a run, you'll be fine. Take care of your health, guys. Smoke some weed and you'll be good. So, uh, <laughs> Speaking of something mm. that Nifupi Pia, like we don't want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> the weight to Solfest. Mm-hmm. We are already we are now in the Solfest era. And it's like, it's in two, one and a half months, maybe? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it, like roughly two and a half months, because it's 4th November, if I'm not mistaken, it's in November, mm-hmm. not December this time, which is I am grateful for, because last December I was in our oh, very big blow of Shere. That's but, true. <laughs> um, yeah, like that surface is coming, the tickets came out, mm-hmm. and people were a bit surprised at the pricing. I wasn't so much. What the, ensued on Twitter? Yeah, oh, like, no, X. X. Elon Musk's ex. Jackie, Mimi, I'm, I am not ever going to go uh, with the wishes of an apartheid nigger. So it's Twitter to me, damn it. So fuck that apartheid bastard. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my He's not God. going to take away the only thing that gave me joy. It's <laughs> Twitter to me, damn it. So anyway, on Twitter. Do you think he named it X because it's kind of grimy now? No. He named it X because he has an obsession with the letter X, apparently. I said, like, X, what can I talk grimes? It was, oh, it was such a good joke. Guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like I said it. I feel up. like I said it. I feel 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 like something is going over your head. You're Superman. I feel like <laughs> like that's what I feel like right now. Fuck! How could I not get that? Jeez. Oh my god! And Grimes, Grimes is God's best poster for real. So like whatever they're doing on that app. I th- whatever. <laughs> Me, I don't do anymore. But yes, we anyway, we'll talk about somebody else in the Kenyan context. Yes. Ben Sol came out and said that uh, he's in Kamona or 20k bana. If you ain't got no money, you get take, take your, your broke ass home. home. I was also listening to a lot of argue. Oh. Yes. So and then like the that. whole like uh-huh. poverty, uh, the, we need to get to this broke mentality. My nigga, it is not a mentality. It's a privilege it, that you've gotten to that point no, in your career. Because I'm broke, of all. broke. Like, yeah. It's not a mentality. See, you have a pesa, you have a mentality. You have a broke pesa, you have Come on, Japan and Tatoa by November. But I'm going to go to www.indeed.com. I'm going to get a fucking job. I'm going to go to Send like, your job application. So, Jackie, break a Monday half post. Tell me, so generation, kuna have a communication. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to administrative work. Exactly. But don't call me broke because I've said, by the way, this is a bit too expensive. Someone, someone has to say bullshit. And I feel like that's what people on X decided to do, Jana. Yeah, I feel. Um, I, I, for a lot of people, it was a. The, there's two things tied into this. Something that I talked about. Cost of living is crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, last last week, where it's a VIP show, and I get it. People, mm. the VIP prices are VIP prices. You're paying 20k. Somebody has that disposable income. Yeah. We we, we talked about this before the show. Somebody mm. has that disposable income, and they're gonna give it to Saudi Soul. Mm-hmm. I know. I have friends who are gonna spend that money. I know it because they have that money. The issue comes in where, and some, a lot of people pointed this out. Love to come about to go broke. Are you sure giving Saudi Soul 20k mm. for a private show is the best use of 20k you can give? There is, um, I don't want to say a history, but there is previous instances of them not really giving a fuck about the paying audience. Exactly. As even the last one first was very was not so good in terms of execution. So it, it begs the question: Is a okay? This is Saudi Soul's last show, but do you feel like even for a VIP show, giving them 20k? And my problem isn't even with the VIP show, because I do feel like even when you pay 20K, mm-hmm. the VIP show will have a lot of corporates, a lot of high spenders, a lot of guys that you want to keep happy. Yeah. Those are the people you want to keep happy. Those are you. Those are you. Like, I want to ask you to milk forever. Mm. Those, those are the guys who will be buying your records, your LPs. Those are the guys who will spend any amount of money to see you. So you need to keep those guys happy. Mm. My issue now is like with the other show. Mm-hmm. The, the, the regular show might not be that much of a focus. 
mm-hmm. based on previous experience. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people are looking at the 20k because the 20k if you're going to pay 20k you other sort of are going to treat you nice. Yeah. Because I feel like the, you got 65 those are those are meet and greet ticket at 65 and I I love that. I love that artists are now looking into more ways of monetizing their audience and looking at super fans. We've had this discussion yeah. looking at super fans and how they can get more from them. Yeah. But we are at the end of the day maybe what you you guys are selling don't look down at your at your core audience. Yeah, that's the thing don't look down. Not even just at your core audience, at just your audience. You are in that position mm. for a very simple reason. Which like goes back to Ben Soul because you can't poverty shame your yeah. audience when they tell you, hey, maybe this isn't this isn't like um the best amount of money for us to pay for the show, and you're like, ah, you, you niggas are just brokies. Yeah, we are this brokies. This broke my mentality nigga. needs to go. Excuse me, I wish I could wake up in the morning, walk up to my meter, and tell it, isi shida kubwa. Isi shida kubwa. Isi shida, isi shida ukweli. I wish I could just look at it and say that, but it's eight units right now. Sindio. Na napika na pika na steamer. Exactly. And then I want to get on X.com. For, first of all, people, the people that were complaining, the bulk of them ni watu wamelipa eight dollars, eight dollars to be a menace on the internet. Exactly. You've come. To just complain, and then my favorite artist on top of that is also calling me broke. My mother has called me broke. My father has called me broke. My cousins have called me broke. Yeah. Udaskiza, udaskiza pedi aje. Alafu we we, ukuje uniambie. Tumekuwa tukimba pedi ya mapenzi hapa pamoja. Eh. Umekuwa ukiniambia nivute bangi na wewe. Umenionyesha vile tunakula avocado. Oh, ni ni ni. You've built a, a brand image that makes you so relatable that like I feel like you see my problems. In fact, like I think that's a, that's a, that's a problem that I was saying uh, I, was, I was telling you about. You like created a frame where you are approachable. You understand the problems that I'm going through. But then on top of that you want to throw it in my face the day that I say that mtali parent e 20k near rent siezi kuja issue yako maybe the way that people said it was like not the best mm-hmm. you can you can we can also say that like you know I, 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 this conversation didn't need to happen altogether but like at the same time I feel like people have a right to share their opinions about how expensive it is for them right now yeah, uh, the people, cost of living thing is a thing the cost of living thing is you a, can't, an actual you can't, thing you can't you can't tweet about it and then in the same breath also say this broke mentality needs to go we don't know where to get this money okay, and at the end of the day maybe you might <laughs> look at, know. you know you might look at he, maybe the, he might watch this and look at us and be like no this nigga is just broke like this is not my no, target like, like it's it's not us it's not us as, as, as if you wanted to go we could i guess like yeah we could <laughs> we, 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 we like we, we me I, i love supporting the artistry i've said this before i love going yeah. for events i love supporting the artistry putting money in your pocket but at the end of the exactly. day do not talk down to your audience don't don't don't, don't. at some people point, have a right to complain if they, if they feel like yeah. like it's an injustice against them as a, as the core audience is it I like maybe like, these guys need social media training kidogo just like do not go go on there reading, reading the room is is an in, it, it's an intri- it's an intrinsic sense you have to know how many celebs want to read the room god that's that was not a good question <laughs> No like let's be honest how many None. celebs know how to read the room because they're celebs None. None. look because you you, you 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 once you get to a level of celebrity you probably think you're God's gift to people and that you you and that your, your demands should be met yeah. immediately but and yeah no, I'm not saying this is the case but anyway yeah, at, not the 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 day, them, yeah, at the end of the day at the end of the day that's it comes back to me do not poverty shame your audience because mm. we, this thing in life is cyclic and we are not big on karma but at the end of the day we've seen guys go from the biggest stars yeah to absolutely nothing So just understand that at the end of the day if you keep talking to people who support you this way they're going to stop. Exactly. They're going to stop. There's some there's always going to be another artist. There's always going to be somebody else they can put their money into. And we've talked about this on the show. We are living in a point where we do not have as much disposable income as we did before. Yeah. Pesa inastrechiwa. So atile pesa kidogo uko nayo you have to think about it like do I really want to give 20k to these guys? For, for for a gig on in 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 November and then skip out on all the gigs that are coming in in deck because there might be like a gig for 25 a gig for 35 a gig for 4k mm. you could stretch that into five or six other gigs across the period from November to the end of like to January next year exactly cater to all like, yeah. cater to everybody that would want to see you yeah. also. or you could give 20k to these people without knowing what this gig is going to be like plus i don't know see they'd already sold out by the time that it was being made anyway That's but why so, I'm saying this conversation didn't need to happen. This, this conversation is moot, but at the end of the day, the the whole relationship of just yeah. or, or scenario where you're telling people that they are broke and they need to get out of their broke mentality just because they said that this is a bit too much for us. Yeah. People live in different realities. We are not all celebrities. We all we don't we don't have endorsements from big brands. Exactly. But everybody who is complaining is a fan. That's the first thing. Almost everyone who's talking about you guys is a fan. Somebody who would show up for you guys 
and they want to but and they, they have been showing up they have been showing up and they want to but they feel like this is a bit out of touch you you've kind of locked out locked them out as an audience and you know like that's their response and I guess. and I feel like there's a lot of a lot of like the thing with the VIP show being I feel like a lot of people feel like the regular show will be ass so they would rather just be in the VIP show pay yeah. that much more have the best experience and then we go next year we, we go to the VIP the regular show and it's ass cuz somebody said on Twitter like the re- you guys need to come muimbe ngoma zenyu zote we 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 are not paying for solfest for harmonize we are exactly. not paying for solfest for octopizo everybody who's paying for solfest came for sol so it's sol in fact at at chana soljen again soljen 10 pm ben sol in viri anybody else you would want by 10 they should be done Three hour set 1 am memaliza throw in the dj everybody goes home not giving guys on stage at 5:30 with the miscommunication and the lack of planning and melipa 20k and you you need for the like regular show so uh, i feel like people who want to even pay for the vip show are, are maybe afraid or are like why would i why should i pay like 5k like last year for sure that's going to be shit either way so mm. let me pay a bit more for sure that i'm sure it's going to be good and then you give them 20k that's where the the disconnect comes the disconnect comes in where it's like i it's either i risk a really bad show for, I, i risk a bad show 5k mm-hmm. or I, i i spend all my entertainment money for sure that i'm sure will be good but after that i have nothing else to do Exactly. Exactly. And I'll comes probably about. never see this artist yeah, again. again. So like it's it's kind it's, of like a bucket list thing yeah, it's in that either way. This or that. So you can see how white people will be a bit frustrated at the pricing and everything else. Yeah. But in, celebrities are going crazy on the internet, including one <laughs> Miss Cat. <laughs> Miss Doja Cat it, it, in the same vein like Pia she's she um I guess has been pushing her fans away or like trying to manage her fan base essentially. She lost about 600k fans um after fans are my followers 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 okay. uh, but the her fans i guess uh, followers, in a sense. Are, followers aren't always fans 600k followers on instagram is a lot mm. i think but like not for her really i feel like it's a negligible amount for her but still like the way that she's been communicating with fans people have had a lot to say about it because at the same time she's also fan built in a way like people have been stunning her since she was like still bitch on macau in her, in her bitch on macau Yeah and now that. and now she's at the point where I guess maybe she sold out and now gonna uh, damu ya mbuzi you know like she's getting <laughs> that money she's getting that vigilant citizen money we can't vigilant what vigilant citizen you know vigilant citizen yeah, that's where we learned about this oh <laughs> 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 Illuminati. Like, Illuminati Illuminatus Nini, like they've been writing about her and like her symbolism for have a couple seen, of months now Have you seen on TikTok the Tanzanian yeah. guy who is recruiting guys the Illuminati <laughs> No <laughs> Yeah like like and then he has a translator he's speaking in so and then there's an English guy translating off camera Tuma kwa hii number sent to this amount and then he nitakutumia link kama link sio ya Google tunaingisha watu Illuminati and then he has like rings and chains that all have the Illuminati symbol Yo. And then he's like it's 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 a perfect scam and then the comments nataka kuingia nimechoka kuwa kuwa kusota I'll I'll give it to you for 5k but like at the same time yeah. if if that's how Doja is making her money and like she feels like she doesn't need her fan base anymore she gone against them calling it themselves kittens I didn't know kittens was even the the, the word that people used Usually, to refer to yeah, <laughs> Doja Cat fans you only live through this whole beef but like it's interesting I guess to see that like at some point you just want to discard of those who don't really want to evolve with you you scare the hoes to so to speak because that's exactly what she's doing the music has been the same there's a song that she released on friday um <laughs> somebody said that people you, were like what was all that about bas you've released the same exact yeah. banger that you used, that you did with planet somebody said somebody said that at the the Kendrick Lamar cosplay wasn't working <laughs> <laughs> look at me look at me you look at that whole like trying to be a ra- somebody said like the the label is like bitch this is not what you signed you for she's a good rapper though i feel like she should like if she wants to lean into it she can but at the same time she should, what you should do is put out a fucking mixtape yeah for free with with her rapping over whatever she wants not taking the label's money cuz you know how the label is with money yeah label na pesa yao hapo ndo tako sana you are not taking the label's money and wasting it on things that cannot sell especially when you are pops of her level cuz i believe they give her the amount of money dedicated to just her is a very large amount so for the label had to be there and be like hmm tunakupatia pesa alafu ndio kitu unafanya like ah hata ujinga ina utwe ngoma unajua but see, like like I, i guess listening to some of the lyrics i don't think she gives a fuck at this point i, I, I have like, a very controversial theory around this she um <laughs> I, i let me let me let me just like finish yeah. the rundown <laughs> of exactly the kind of like conundrum she's locked herself into uh-huh. she's also MBA, being cancelled because she's dating a guy who was a pedo on was it twitch 
or something. Ah, nice. And she was called out for it. <laughs> And she was called out for it. So then uh-huh. she she like combined it with like um, this whole image controversy. So like she's swimming in muck basically, but she's made it seem like it was a strategy to release the music that she wants to release. That's uh, a critique that I saw online, and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But what's your theory? My theory is very simple: that ever since she found out that black people find her attractive. She has been trying to become ex- extremely unattractive to them. She sounds very white now. Even even like the the, the video that I saw, like, <laughs> she sounds like a white lady. She sounds more like a white side now than ever. Like we all remember the whole like she's in racial chat from showing feet. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I feel like once she found out, hey, black people find me extremely attractive, Maze. And she's like, I, like I, I can't have black people like jacking off to me. Let me become the worst version of myself so that black people will stop fucking with me. That's a very controversial theory I have, but I, I do support it. Because ever since that shit happened, she went to like the pla- like through Planet Her and uh-huh. did Woman and like become this like sex symbol. And then decided I'm going to burn it all down, color my hair pink, take the most unattractive photos, behave like a Karen. Yeah. There's a there's a it is very Karen, Karen it's behavior. very Karen, isn't it? Yeah. Like insulting. Black people don't insult their fans except for the ones in Kenya. But <laughs> Black people don't insult their fans. Why I don't think people just like Beyonce? Like she's expensive. She knows she's yeah. good. She has some whim to come away with more afford. Nisawa. Yeah, go, raise, go raise your Nisawa. family. Nisawa. Utawana, utawana show yangu Netflix. Ujue exactly. Bile kukua kutamu. Amazon and, you Prime know, are going to give me a bag to make sure like there's somebody shooting that. There's somebody making a documentary about the so whole. So that all of you can see. So that you know when you're spending $4,000 on, on a ticket to come and see me. You're coming mm-hmm. to see greatness. You will never see greatness like this again. Yes. And you look for that money, you'll work your entire life, you'll put it into a savings account, you'll be like, Hini yasi kuya Beyonce. Yeah, we were even having this discussion It before. happens. You know, like the whole it's possible to be respectful. How much you, you would pay for an artist, because Fabulous is coming. Oh, when? On Thursday, the day this drops, is performing. Mm. Yeah. And VIP for her Fabulous is 50k. And it's like, Fabulous isn't an artist I would give 50k to watch VIP. But if Drake was coming and VIP was 100k... You would. I would. Like, I'm not the biggest Drake stan, but I do feel like seeing Drake fear. It, it's, it's one like, of those things it's, it's you one of those things you, Yeah, even Kendrick Lamar, because I know yeah. guys who are going to see Kendrick Lamar in SA, mm. um, in deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you're going to pay that money because it's Kendrick Lamar. Mm. Jay-Z, yeah, you're going to go watch Jay-Z. Nas, you're going to... There's, there's, a, there's a logic behind you, you guys being those artists where um, you have to see. Like, Kutani yeah. Kupesa. Yeah. Uh, who was saying, um, G Man was saying how, like, if it's Burner Boy, you would pay that 20k. If yeah. Burner Boy came to Kenya, the VIP was 35k, there wouldn't even be a discussion around whether or not it was worth it. Exactly. Because we already know the type of performer he is. Mm. Or th- there's a legend status that he has achieved, a legendary air he has around him now, yeah. where it feels now like it's not just you seeing an artist, it's you now experiencing something. Even if you saw him before, this is a whole new experience. It's a it's whole new world you're, you're, you're living in. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience that they're curating for you. Yes. Yeah. And I guess that's 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 kind of the same take that um, maybe Saudi Soul had about it because it's the last time that people are going to get to see them perform. Yeah, and it's okay. And it's it's it's. And yeah. I get where they're coming from. I get like... And I told you, I understand the why it's 20K. Yeah. What I don't get is why you're telling people, like, if they, if they don't have it, like, you niggas are broke. I'm going to be a broke. mentality of a like yeah. telling people that you come on at 20k by November, like you need to really seriously look at your life. My nigga, people have more going on in life than Saudi Soul. As a, yeah, people have way more. You look at my life all the time, bro. Like niggas, auto wanna, mudo na mama amtu na zagongo na punda ugu shago mazee. Iyo pesa liko na kakando lazima peleke wa maki hospitali. There's a lot that happens in life, and you're telling people to plan to look at to look at themselves internally and think about mbona sina 20k ako na Saudi Soul. Brother, okay, um, to get a kid twenty k is easy. Their first priority is not to think Saudi soul, unless for a very few select people in Kenya. Yeah, I feel like for the regular person who for a twenty k is easy, your first priority is not gonna be, hey, I have to go see Saudi soul, my nigga. You mm-hmm. have things to do like bills, pending things. The economic environment is bad, so I understand why the ticket is twenty k. There's a whole, there's logic behind it. We do not know what the the show will be like, but I feel like the show, the the VIP show, will be worth that. But you coming back and telling people that. They should look at themselves because they don't have that. Is very uh, classist, elitist, elitist. It's giving poverty shaming. <laughs> it's giving Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's the whole point here. You hey, you can't talk down to your audience because they, Yeah, and the thing is, you can't talk down to your audience because they don't have enough money to come and see you to afford a ticket. 
Let the people who are going to come, come. Let the people who are going to come for the other show, come for the other show. Don't come here and act that because people can't afford one thing and they're saying we can't afford it, we would like to. That means that they're in a position where they're poor or like mm. they can't, like you're basically shaming them for not having enough. Who in this country has enough? Anyway, babes, as we always say on Breaking Hearts, concert tickets are expensive. Ooh. Concert tickets are expensive. Way too expensive. Way too expensive. But you'll find us too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing about mm. it. But like, it, it's definitely a lot to think about. Anyway, so this all, yeah. if you're watching this, Cheki, we are about to you. To our panda, we'd still want to yeah, know. Yeah, we'd still want to like, interview. Like, <laughs> nobody here is trying to like hold your hand and pretend like this shit isn't happening. Yeah, it but, is, but still, we would love that interview. But it's a it? very tense economic environment. Yeah. You can't say some things. Mm-hmm. Evo, Evo, true. Like you need to be very careful about, especially people's pockets. This is not the time. Exactly. This is hardly the time. So anyway, I yeah. think we are done for today. Unless We're done for today. Yeah. I don't many miss and at Menda over time. Over time, but <laughs> I feel like people also need to hear a bit more because I was just there for like two weeks. Maze. There's like two hours, like one and a half hours of recording that you are not present. So to now, more get two extra kidogo. To me, I'll party a surua. Maze. Nasa to go Spotify. Kama una chaka kama una chaka anga sana to kiongea. You can also listen to us as you wash your dishes. Says, when you're going to work, when yeah. you're at work, when your boss tells you that you didn't do the report correctly, but your boss is incompetent. When you're stuck in traffic at the petrol station. Exactly. Ukifuel for so na una shanga will I get home? We'll Maze, be there with you. When you decide to take your long drive to Namanga because Nairobi just isn't cutting it anymore, exactly. we'll be there. We'll be when, there. When you go find your girlfriend and find me in her house and then you're crying <laughs> in the car, like I'll be there too. Yeah, her family will be there, and he'll say that he's your boyfriend's girlfriend, and you'll remember. What? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, that's a fun tidbit for the end of the show. What? To remember, Lisa. Okay, your 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 girlfriend's boyfriend. <laughs> you have I have I gender sh- uh, gender shamed you? Have I gender Jackie, switched no. you? Jackie, love is love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being with us. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, they them. Ooh. Jackie, I'm not making any declarations, but <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. This is episode 38. And if you take one thing from this episode, Hafari is him. Always has been, baby. <laughs> and uh, good night, good day, <laughs> whatever you're listening to <laughs> exactly. us from. Exactly. So, Drug Fender. See you guys bye. later.